and we welcome you here this All Saints Day. Uh, some announcements before we get started. Uh, we want to thank the Schaefers for breakfast this morning. Uh, for those that came, I know that was really good. There you go. That also means that we have to say who's going to do it next month. Uh, you don't have to necessarily jump up and down and identify right now, but call Sarah this week and let us know. Snackers are doing it. Very good. Congratulations and thank you. <laughs> that looked like it was close to a voluntold, but not quite. <laughs> oh, they had signed. Very good. All right. Uh, we want to uh, thank everyone that came and participated in the charge conference on uh, Wednesday, November 3rd. Uh, never, never the most exciting thing, but uh, always important to do the work of the church that comes up every year. Uh, we also want to thank those who helped out with the election dinner. Uh, that was a uh, lunch and election lunch. That was a big success. Um, UMW came in and packed 48 Operation Christmas Child boxes. And so we thank everyone that participated and helped out with that. Uh, and to note also that uh, Clarksville put together seven boxes on their own. And uh, we recognize that and, and praise God for all that work and where it goes and how it serves the cause of Christ. Uh, tonight's Bible study will be here in the building uh, at 6.30. Uh, we continue to work through uh, the book of Romans. Anyone that would like to come and join in, uh, we're, we're avoiding the fire pit because it's just starting to get a little too cold and, and uh, trying to decide when it's too dark and when it's too light. And So we'll be in here uh, where we can control the environment just a little bit more. The uh, Ladies' Advent rehearsal is on uh, November 8th at 6.30 in the Sanctuary. Uh, Mary Haven is this week on Tuesday the 9th at 7.30. And uh, Clarksville will be offering a uh, Narcan training on November 13th at 1 p.m. Uh, at Clarksville United Methodist Church. This is done in uh, connection with Brightview Health. Uh, Narcan is the substance that you uh, give to someone who uh, you suspect is in the midst of a, an opioid overdose, and uh, it's not an injection, it's actually a nasal uh, drops, and uh, we will give you all the training you need to have on that, as well as supply you with your first dose, if you're willing to take the training. That is Saturday the 13th at 1 p.m. Let us stand and join our voices together with hymn number 711, For All the Saints.
Good morning. Good morning. Um, please join me in the call to worship. Almighty God, you knit together the whole of the elect into one body, the church. Oh, when the saints come marching in. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in the example of their discipleship. Lord, how I want to be in that number. That we may come to know the same joy that you have prepared for all who truly believe. When the saints come marching in. May be seated. We turn to God with our prayers, some prayers that we want to recognize. Um, Jessica Perfroy has uh, uh, been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. We uh, pray for her treatments that she can move forward with a normal life and hold off symptoms. Uh, Barb Bailey's cousin, Linda, is under hospice care. Uh, we pray for the family of Doug Beckett. He grew up in this church, passed away of pancreatic cancer uh, on October 27th. Uh, we continue to pray for Sarah Strom. Uh, she's been upgraded to status two on the heart transplant list, uh, but we need her to move up quickly uh, so that she can be... Uh, cared for appropriately. Uh, we continue to pray for Angela Harner uh, in her cancer fight. Uh, I did have a chance to see her the other day, and she's doing well and of good spirit. Um, George Largent's friend Preston uh, passed away last night, uh, so we uh, have been praying for him over a blockage, and uh, we uh, praise that that is no longer uh, a concern of this life, uh, but yet we certainly lift up his family and his friends uh, who feel that void this day. Uh, we continue to pray for Tom and Julie and their recovery um, and uh, uh, rejoice that uh, uh, Tom was with us last week and is doing well, and Ju Julie is here today. Uh, we continue to pray for Phyllis Rosenberg, uh, suffered a stroke and is undergoing rehab, and a praise from the Largent family. Uh, we welcome Joe Barry. Uh, Yes, that's worth it. Serves in the Navy, and he's home from Japan. This is All Saints Day. It's a day where we uh, remember those who have gone before, those who have joined the victorious, those whom God holds closely in his hand. Uh, we will recognize those saints of this church that have passed, and we invite uh, family and friend to come up and, and uh, light the candles. And as we pray in our pastoral prayer, we will give you opportunity to lift up and name the people on your hearts this day. Uh, and as we do those, uh, we will answer as a congregation Lord, hear our prayers. Recognition of our saints. Haley Harris, who passed away December 18th, 2019. And Victoria Tory Harris, who passed away January 8th, 2021. Florence Widman, who passed away April 8th, 2021. Connie Mowry, who passed away August 15th, 2021.
Let us pray. Almighty God, for all the saints who have gone before, for those who have molded and made us who we are, for those who have shared their faith, led us in our first prayers, for those who have upheld the church through the ages and the generations, given to us this great gift, knowledge of Jesus Christ. We come to you this day celebrating with the whole of the church all those who have molded us and made us. And we lift up their names one by one. Lord, hear our prayer. 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 We give you thanks for each of these names, for the lives that they have shared with us. We ask that you continue to fill within us the void that they have left behind. For we rejoice that you have accepted them, but we long and miss them in our lives. Likewise, we come this day as the church and we list up these names that we have called for that in this life need your healing and your strength. Give us peace and faith in knowing that you hear, you listen, and you respond. Fill in us the strength of following your call to be your disciples, and following the way of Christ, and reaching out and sharing in the same way that the saints have first shared with us, following in the example of all the lives lived that lead us to love, and care for one another. This is the way of your church. This is the way of your plan. This is the way of our lives. In these ways, we continue to seek and be disciples of Christ, following in the love and care that he showed us, and lifting up the words that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Invite the children to come up. Howdy. How are you all doing today? Kind of quiet today, huh? Yeah, just a little, little sleepy. You got an extra hour of sleep? Should be wide and awake and alert and excited. Not so much. I'm wearing my stool today. Try and remember to do this more often. But this is something the pastors wear. We wear it as a yoke. Reminds us kind of like cattle when you yoke up cattle to 
be able to lead them which way you want them to go. That we are yoked by the will of God. And that's what's important in our lives. And I have this set of stoles, and uh, you've seen some of these before because I've worn them before, but this is the story behind them. You see how the, the different threads weave down through the fabric, right? Kind of like strings and threads, and they crisscross and they weave together and they mesh, but not tightly, loosely. I wear these, I have them actually specially made for me because it reminds me of a sermon I once gave that talks about this is how our lives are. They weave together and they connect and they go in and out and through each other. They don't wrap together tightly, but they're connected. Now if you pull them, they, they, they tangle and they get all caught up, but that's, that's how we're supposed to live. That's what we're called to do in the church. We're supposed to be part of each other's lives. We're supposed to connect in all the important places and care for one another and love one another. And so I have a whole set of these made, and I've got them for all the colors, and right now we're in green, and so... It's, it's green time, um, but I have a blue one and a purple one and a red one and a white one and a blue, red, purple, and a green one. And uh, I, I could have a gold one and a black one, but those are only for one day a year, and, and I'm not going to do that because they're, like, really expensive to have made. But, but the point is, hopefully, whenever you see me wearing these, and you see all these threads like this, you'll remember that that's supposed to be what we are as the church. Connected one to another. Weaving in and out of each other's lives because we love and we care for each other. Remember that? Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for how you weave us together in and around loving and caring, bearing one another's burdens, celebrating in the victory, holding one another in account. We come to be your church. Help us to love and care for one another in the same way you love and care for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for coming up here. Um, please join me in the scripture reading for today. It's from the words of Solomon 3, 1 through 9. But the souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch him. They seemed in the view of the foolish to be dead, and their passing away was sought an affliction. And their going forth from us utter, utter destruction, but they are in peace. For if before people indeed they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastise the little, they shall be greatly blessed because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine and dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in God shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide in him with, in love. Because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and God's care is with the elect. This is the word of God for the people of God. Be to God. Let us pray. Lift mine eyes into the hills, once cometh my help. My help is in the name of the Lord who makes heaven and earth. Grant blessing in this time spent that the words spoken and the words heard might be one and the same. Spoken and heard, it will be pleasing in your sight. Amen. 
Last week was Reformation Sunday. We're Protestants, but not being Lutherans, we typically don't give much mind or thought to Reformation Sunday. Reformation Sunday is the Sunday closest to the anniversary of when Martin Luther, who was a monk and a Catholic priest at the time, went and nailed his 95 thesis to the door of the church that he served. 95 complaints against the practices of the Holy Catholic faith. And in putting up those complaints, he severed the ties that he held as a priest and a monk. One of the complaints that he raised up amongst the many was the inaccessibility of the Holy Scriptures from the masses. The official language of the Catholic Church was and remained for another 450 some odd years, Latin, which even in Luther's day was already a dying language. No one understood the words that they were saying, yet all the liturgies, all the masses, all the scripture was given and read in Latin. So the bulk of people had no ability to read or comprehend the scriptures for themselves. So one of the many repercussions of Luther's actions was the formation of the Protestant Bible. When the first Christian Bibles were put together, it was called the Vulgate because Latin was considered the vulgar or common language of the time. About the same time the Vulgate and the Septuagint were both being pieced together, the Jewish people were canonizing their text, looking at the long list of scrolls that they were supposed to keep on hand and deciding which ones were authoritative and which ones were not necessary. So a group of Bible books, all in the Old Testament, are in our earliest Bibles, were no longer in use by the Jewish people when Martin Luther posted his 95 Thesis in 1517. And this is why when Martin Luther helped translate the first German Bibles, they left out that set of books that we call apocryphal texts, making the Catholic Bible and the Protestant Bibles different. Today's scripture reading, if you were kind of looking at it a little funny because you never heard anything like that quite before, is from one of those books of the Bible. As Methodists, we're not all that far removed from our Catholic brothers and sisters. Methodists are Anglicans, or here in the United States, Episcopalians, with a Wesleyan bent towards piety. The Anglican Church is directly modeled after the Catholic Church due to a disagreement between the English king and the Pope. The English king wanted a divorce, and the Pope wouldn't grant it. So the English king made his own church. And that's why we're all not Catholic. All of this is a long pathway of explanation to our lectionary including several passages throughout the year that come from the apocryphal or Catholic Bible. In fact, if you pull out your hymnal and turn to page 652, you'll find a responsive reading based on today's scripture text, even though you will not find that scripture text in the pew Bible located right next to the hymnal. I say all this because I've run into more than a few people in the course of my ministry, who don't recognize Catholics as Christians on occasion, and to introduce prayer candle stands or preach from Catholic texts, somehow less than proper. To all that, I say, bunk, with a big capital B. Now, there's good reason why these texts were removed from the Jewish canon, but that does not mean they don't have anything to say to us today about our relationship with God. The wisdom of Solomon most certainly was not written by 
Solomon. Scholars place the writing very late, perhaps even during the time of Jesus' life, but more likely around 200 to 100 BC. It includes the non-Jewish thoughts, such as considerations to resurrection and the life hereafter. So this text is a perfect text for this day, All Saints Day. And if you're put off by the notion that it's not in your Bible, well, go out and get yourself one of these. This is my study Bible from seminary. And it includes the apocryphal and deuterocanonical books of the Bible. Or just get yourself a Catholic Bible, and then you'll have them all. Enough on all that. I can never speak for anyone else. I can only speak from my experience. The greatest loss I have felt in my life continues to be the loss of my father. He was an alcoholic. He smoked at least a pack a day, a habit that he carried all through his life. And so when he was found to be sucking on the oxygen out of his welding tank, it was determined that he was having some problems. His girlfriend decided to get him admitted to the hospital. It was only on a whim that she bothered to call me up. In his oxygen-deprived mind, he was hallucinating and talking to his dogs and carrying on about old vacations. And one of the things that scared her most was that she wanted my phone number because she was convinced that he needed to turn himself into the FBI. And he wanted me to be there when he did. And he couldn't tell her why he needed to turn himself in. But she was concerned that he would remember my number and call me in this state. And so she called me first. I got to the hospital the next day. On that day, he was fairly lucid. He could communicate, but he did not have enough breath to match two sentences up together. So I did most of the talking. When I wasn't talking, we just sat and were. The following day, when I got to the hospital, he was unconscious. His breathing had progressively worsened through the day. I called my sister and informed her what was going on. And she was coming, but she was at a distance of about 200 some odd miles. The decision was made by the doctor that he needed to be placed on a ventilator. His heart failed in the process of trying to place him on the ventilator. The doctor wasn't there at the time. I had to tell the doctor that my father had passed. That was March 16th, 1989. Jamie and I had not even been married a year. My sister did not make it into town to say goodbye. 32 years, and it still hurts to stop and think on it for any real length of time. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. The eyes of the foolish they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster, and they're going from us to be their destruction. But they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. This is our faith. This is what salvation and belief in the resurrection to everlasting life means. Death does not 
ever win. Ever. Nor does it have the final say. We cannot avoid the fact that we miss our loved ones. We will miss them until we ourselves draw our last breath. But we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses who have gone on before. Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm, for love is stronger than death, passion fiercer than the grave. It flashes of fire, a raging flame. Song of Solomon 8.6 Love is stronger than death, passion fiercer than the grave. The love of our loved ones continues on in our lives in our most cherished memories. It cannot be extinguished by this temporal thing that we call death. Let me repeat that. The temporary thing called death. It is not part of the next life. Death is only a thing that we consider in the separation. We celebrate this day. Reading the role of the victorious. Victorious because through the grace of God, they have conquered death. Promise made real by the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. The foundation of our faith. It has no other purpose but to declare what we believe in this life and the next. It is the ultimate purpose for which our Lord and Savior came into this earth. And so it must be at the heart of everything we believe. And it is. Let us pray. Eternal God, we praise you for the great company of all those who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labors. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you. To each of these, Grant your peace. Let your perpetual light shine upon them and help us so too to believe that which we have not seen. That your presence may lead us through our years and bring us at last with them into the joy of your home, not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen. And amen. Communion. At one minute. If you take atonement and you break it down, atonement is at one ment at one ment with God communion with God community with one another with those who are those who were those who will ever be linked in this act of remembrance of what salvation is for and about. That we are still at one with all those whom we love and with God who provides the way. 
so it is that we remember. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, broke it, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Likewise, when the meal was over, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, drink, each of you, for this is the cup of the new covenant. The new covenant poured out in my blood for the forgiveness of sin for yours and for many. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, do so in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come this day celebrating all those who have led us and cared for our faith to this moment, who have shared with us through the ages and the generations this sacred meal which you provide and can come from no other. Allow it to make us one with each other, one with Christ, one in service to the world, broken and poured out in his example, the living sacrifice, that we might serve others as you have loved, cared, and served us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The body of Christ broken for you, take, eat, in remembrance of him. Blood of Christ poured out for you. Take drink in remembrance of him. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for this holy meal. A gift which you have provided. Allow it to nourish our bodies, feed our souls, lead us bravely out into the world we might continue to be your people in service to your people, carrying the message of hope and salvation and resurrection wherever we go. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Join me in the offertory prayer. As we prepare to leave today, let me offer the prayer of thanks for the offering you will be giving in the offering plates in the back of the sanctuary. God of all generations, as we worship today, we offer our whole selves to you, all that we have and all that we are. Like your saints who have gone before us, we pray that you will help us be bold in our mission and in our witness. May we who have been, been, give, been given so much give freely, ministering to, in your compassion to the multitudes both near and far from us, so that one day we may stand amidst the multitude that gathers at your heavenly throne. We pray this in the name of our Savior and Redeemer, Christ our Lord. Amen.
And I'll go with the assurance you are created in the image of God, redeemed by the blood of his son, Jesus Christ, guided and protected by his Holy Spirit, prepared to face the trials of tomorrow. Amen. Thank you.